Marty. I have the honor to report that there are now present members of the graduating class, the staff, and the faculty of Queensboro Community College of the City University of New York, the governing bodies of the City of New York, and the State of New York, all gathered to participate in these, the 43rd commencement exercises of Queensboro Community College of the City University of New York. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 44th commencement exercises of Queensboro Community College of the City University of New York. Please stand for the national anthem, which will follow immediately. Mr. Devin Olivas, one of our students, is our vocalist. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous flights or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Ladies and gentlemen, the president of Queensboro Community College of the City University of New York, Dr. Eduardo J. Marti. Thank you, Grand Marshal Moshe, and welcome to all of you. Carpe diem. Seize the day. This is your day. And let me tell you that you are extremely important. You have in this podium individuals who run the city, run the state, and someday may even run the nation. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the Mayor of New York City, Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, 
I was uh, asked if the mayor could arrange sunny 80 degree weather for today's <laughs> ceremony, but all I promised was no rain for this morning. Let me start by saying one simple thing. Congratulations, graduates of 2005. Day, awarding degrees to over 1,400 outstanding candidates from more than 30 programs of study, including the first massage therapy graduates in the history of the college. I don't know about you, but I say we cancel the rest of the speeches and let those seven people show us what they learned. <laughs> Seriously, I am thrilled to have been asked to speak today, even though I understand I was your second choice, <laughs> after Deep Throat. <laughs> I'm glad he was unavailable because I feel totally comfortable here, and it's not just because this campus was at one time a golf course. <laughs> Turns out that I share something special with this place. We've both been featured on Law and Order. You played a beautiful campus and I played the mayor. That's called typecasting. Before I go any further, I just want to say a few words about a very important group here today. And no, it's not you, the graduates. I am talking about your parents, your children, your brothers, your sisters, all of your friends and family who have encouraged you and supported you and helped you reach this wonderful day. Give them a round of applause. Now, I've spoken to a graduating class or two in my time, and I've always tried to honor the three golden rules for commencement speakers as set forth by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Be sincere, be succinct, and then be seated. <laughs> but instead of being seated, I'm going off to my next event after this. Nevertheless, I promise to follow that advice basically because I don't want to be the biggest hurdle between you and your degree. There's a lot to talk about today. This has been another great year for Queensboro. The school held its first honors conference, giving honors students the chance to show off their work to the rest of the campus. The Campus Art Gallery recently reopened to rave reviews after a multi-million dollar renovation. The school moved forward with plans for a brand new instructional building and permanent space for its incredible Holocaust Resource Center. After we recently proposed a $157 million capital construction program at CUNY, the largest in its history. And I can't forget to mention that the baseball team was named CUNY champions for the third straight year in a row. You actually might have the most successful baseball team in Queens today. Go Tigers! Of course, what the college is most proud of is sitting right in front of me this morning. You know, usually the role of a commencement speaker is to inspire the graduates as they embark on the next chapter in their lives. But standing here, really, I can't help but be inspired by you. I don't know if everyone in this audience today realizes it, but we are in the presence of some true heroes. Graduates like Dale Martinez, who juggled her studies with a job at the, co at the college and raising a 15-year-old son. Graduates like Gilchrist Burton, the winner of the college's Martin Luther King Award. He takes three trains, two buses, and a ferry ride just to get here from Staten Island. Graduates like Nakia Henry, who was once homeless and is now on her way to Columbia University. Matt 
Madeline Gomez, who has undergone severe physical disabilities, not, o- not only to earn a degree, but also to help create legislation improving access to educational texts. Fourteen hundred other examples of incredible perseverance and commitment to getting an education. The paths you've taken to this ceremony have all been unique, but each of you has made some courageous decisions, or balanced incredible responsibilities, or overcome tremendous odds to get your degrees. Many graduates could not even be here today because of their professional or personal commitments. And there's another amazing thing about this graduating class. It's your remarkable diversity. I can see graduates of all colors, all ethnic groups, and all ages. I see 19-year-olds, I see 30 and 40-year-olds, I even see a 65-year-old. Now that's impressive. there and I can tell you someone my age doing homework, passing exams and completing studies, it's kind of hard to believe. I can't even remember where I left my keys this morning. <laughs> and talk about diversity, you hail from 86 different countries, from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. There's no question this multiculturalism has always been a tradition at Queensborough and in the borough of Queens. In the most diverse city on the planet, Queens is the most diverse place. I often like to say you can tour the entire world and never leave this borough. And this diversity, yes, you can do that. And this diversity has always been the true strength of our city. The creativity, energy, and determination of those who have come here from abroad is why this is the greatest city in the world. Since its first days as a remote trading outpost, New York has been a place that embraces dreamers and doers, no matter what language they speak or what faith they follow. It's a meritocracy that values talent and guts most of all. A city where anyone with true determination can achieve success. A college president who once fled political oppression in Cuba or a mayor who was once a middle-class kid from a small town in Massachusetts. You know, I came here after college and graduate school and took a job on Wall Street, starting out as a clerk, and then rising up slowly through the ranks to become a general partner. It was a great ride, and it was filled with fun times, good work, and much praise, right up until the day they fired me. (laughs) And I hope that you have exactly the same experiences, let me tell you. Firing isn't the worst thing that ever happened. The job I had taught me an enormous amount. But when it was over, it was over. I didn't make that choice, but I never looked back. I was faced with several alternatives, and how I dealt with them turned out would define the rest of my life. The key thing was, even after getting fired, I remained an optimist. And that's what I want to urge all of you to do. There's the old story about the kid who came home, found his bedroom floor covered in horse manure, and got a big smile on his face, because he knew there was a pony in there someplace. (laughs) Now believe me, there are times at City Hall when it's hard to find that pony. But I'll tell you, those who succeed in life usually do find the pony. So after getting fired, instead of taking a similar job, I took a chance and I, I tried something that I thought might be even better. And literally, the very next day, I started a new company. And it sounded like a great idea to me. Of course, I will say that I can't remember anybody else who thought it was a great idea at the time. I started with four employees and one office and one coffee pot and no business. And today, if I can say so myself, the company's a little bit successful. But but it was a great ride. And then after 20 years, I'll tell you something else that happened to me. After all the success that I had in business, Something interesting was happening. I began to feel that there were some real positive differences I could make right here in the city that I loved, the city that I called home, the city where my two daughters were going to grow up, 
and the city that gave me the opportunities. So I made another choice. Now, it isn't easy to walk away from something that's very successful. As a matter of fact, everybody probably thinks you're crazy when you do so. But I went and I decided I wanted to do something else. I wanted to give back to this city that had been so good to me. And that's another one of my messages. I would urge all of you, there's nothing wrong with being successful in business. I hope you all have great wealth and can enjoy, enjoy all the things that it can buy. But you have a responsibility to help those who helped you. Not just your parents, not just the benefactors of where you went to school, not just all the people that put the hard work in behind you and got the sites ready for you to then come and be a success. You also have to remember those who are working alongside of you and those who are going to be left after you. Not just your children and grandchildren, but everybody else's children and grandchildren as well. Now, I was called a hopeless long shot. Uh, not everybody thought that I was going to be a good mayor. Uh, some people have said he's running government by dictatorship. Uh, some people have said anyone would be a thousand times better mayor than me. Uh, actually, one woman said he never listens. He needs to pay more attention. That was from my mother. Um, but you know, you are going to be faced with making tough choices when you get out there. There's never no, an easy answer. It's not like in the textbook, where all you've got to do is look at the facts and there's an obvious answer. In many cases, there is no right answer. And no matter which way you go, some people will criticize you. But you have to make decisions. As Yogi Berra said, when you come to the crossroads, take it. <laughs> and that's, he's actually said about a fork in a row, but I think it works better the other way. You have to go ahead and do things and not worry about what people are saying. If in your heart you know it's right, if that's where your dreams want to take you, go and do it. It is not going to be easy. You're not going to win the lottery. You are going to have to work hard, but in the end, the likelihood of doing it is something greater than zero. And the likelihood of failure, if you don't try, is 100%. Don't forget, you gotta go and make the effort. Now, let me leave you with something else. Actually, it is a gambling tip. And this is it. Place your bets on New York City. Place your bet on the safest big city in the nation. New York's crime rate is down 20% over the last four years, and it's, it's going down even more. This is a place to raise your family. Place your bet on a city that cares about the health of its citizens. Our public hospitals are now ranked among the best in the country. Place your bets on a city that's creating new jobs and opportunity in every borough for every group of people. Place your bets in a city where culture is celebrated, where every religion is practiced, where every language is spoken, and where every cuisine is enjoyed. Place your bets on a city that understands the value of a good education and its potential to unlock the dreams of every New Yorker. That's why we've made education, public education, from kindergarten through college, <laughs> the number one priority in our administration. And it's why I mentioned earlier, we have proposed the largest capital construction budget in CUNY's history, which will help us build on the university's recent remarkable revival. All right, now, you've got your degree. You're gonna go out there, you're gonna fight. Some of you are gonna stay here and share your incredible knowledge with us. Some of you will make the mistake, I think, and go elsewhere. <laughs> But let me tell you, this city needs you. I'm not asking you to come here just because it's a nice thing to say. We are a city that thrives because people who have moxie, people who are honest, people who are willing to try new things have come here since the days this city was founded. We need you. New York City's come a long ways in the last 350 years. It's particularly come a long ways in the last three years since the terrible tragedy of 9-11. In those days, there was a lot of uncertainty about New York. Some people didn't think we had a future. But we got through it. It wasn't easy. In fact, it was painful and frightening at times. But we did it. 
We learned a lot in the process. We learned how important it is to stick together in difficult times. We learned that we live among true heroes, the very best and the very brightest. And we learned that we've got to take risks, even when the so-called experts say something is impossible. And now we've got to continue to think big. We've got to continue building on what we've started. To imagine the possibilities, as you say, at Queensboro. Senator Schumer gave a speech a couple weeks ago where he talked about that. He said he hoped that we haven't lost the drive and the courage to go forward. I don't think we have, but it's always a challenge. So as we look back on your successes, we also have to look ahead. We must celebrate the future the unlimited future that each of you and this city has. And I have no doubt that you are all more prepared to meet that challenge and bring honor to your city, your school, and yourselves. Congratulations, and may this day, day be filled with joy for you and all of your loved ones. And thank you very much because, ladies and gentlemen, on this stage you have the three major forces that have finally recognized that community colleges of the City of the University of New York need capital help. And Mayor Bloomberg put the $350 million in his budget. The City Council has been fighting for money to match the state. And let us not forget the state of New York, Senator Palawan, who has always been out there really fighting for uh, the capital budget of the city and the of New York. Now, let me introduce to you the person who has become the queen of queens, the person who is always the individual who represents almost like the mother of queens, and an educator, a real good friend of CUNY, the Borough President, Helen Marshall. Thank you very much, Dr. Marty. And to all of the parents, the husbands, the wives, and the children of the graduates, I know that you're breathing a sigh of relief because your person has made this great step. Um, I would like to, yes. <laughs> Most important, though, are the graduates themselves. And Dr. Marty, I too am a friend and a great contributor to Queensborough Community College to the point of two and a half million dollars. And I'm very proud of that for this year. And I will continue to give as long as you keep me in office. <laughs> we don't have oil wells or gold mines in our city. Our natural resource is our people. And how better can we nourish our natural resource than through education? And I know it personally because I am a teacher, and I know what an education has done for me. I want to thank you, Dr. Marty, for giving me the privilege of participating in this great, this great occasion this morning. I know for all of the students, your, this commencement will be, an will be inspirational, and I think you've just received great inspiration from the mayor of our city. It will, be, it will also launch you into a life of new commitments and responsibilities. I am a graduate of the City University, so are my children, both of my children who are doing very well, and I think I'm doing pretty well too. And my degree from the City University had a lot to do with it. Um, it brings back to me my days at, at Queens College, where I graduated from, which was hectic. I didn't go to school until I was 30 years old because I just didn't have the opportunity before that. And I know that there are many of you in this room who started, how many, just let's hear it, how many people are over 30 who are graduating today? And you know when you, when you get a little age on you, that means also that you have a family and usually a job. And I know a little bit about the statistics of the City University because I was the founding chair, higher education chair in the City Council. And I know that many of you are kind of struggling to get the, that money together for tuition and keep your families going, paying your rent, etc. So it's, and for some of you it has been harder, some of it has been, some of you has been easier. 
But guess what? You've done it. You've done it. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> Queensboro Community College graduates come to 114, 100, from 135 different countries. And Dr. Marty has actually held swearing in services, immigration, uh, swearing in citizenship uh, ceremonies right here at the college. And you know Queens is the most ethnically diverse county in the world, and we get along. We get along, and I'm so proud of this borough. And I certainly appreciate the opportunity and the privilege of being your borough president. <laughs> um, not only do you come from many different countries, you come with different dreams, you come with um, freedom of equality, social justice, and peace for the opportunity to make life better for yourselves and as a result, making life better for all of New York City. Some of you are the first members of your family to have attended college. Many of your families have sacrificed and have supported you, supported you to enable you to succeed. But you're the ones who did it. Today we're celebrating your achievement. Studies show that graduates of Queensborough Community College will be very successful in the technological age. You'll make more money than most. Many of you will own two homes. You will work more hours, spend more time, and pay more taxes, and share in a bigger piece of the American pie. But it's all good. <clears throat> However, I caution you on this, to, as you set out on this great journey, I would like to share with you a concern expressed by Dr. Martin Luther King. Nothing in our glittering, techno in our glittering technology can raise, can raise men to new heights because material growth has, has, been, as it has been as itself made an end unto itself. And in the absence of moral purpose, man himself becomes smaller than the works of, uh, works of man become bigger. Today I urge you to look beyond material gratification and as you heard the mayor, the mayor is a very wealthy man. You would say that he's achieved all that needs to be achieved in life. But he didn't. He felt there was something more that he wanted to get out of life. And we all know when you give, you also get a great deal back. He's working for this city for a dollar a year. Do you know that? Do you know that he's working for a dollar a year? That's the salary that he gets? He wants to get, and we understand, those of us in government know and understand the gratification we get in serving the public. And I know I speak for all of my colleagues who are behind me on the stage and those who represent our city, our state, and our federal government. And we do have a federal representative. We have our United States Senator, Chuck Schumer. And we have him. And to end, a poem by Langston Hughes. I dream a world. I dream a world where men we are men who no other men will scorn, where love will bless the earth and peace, peace its path adorn. I dream a world where all will know how the sweet freedom's way. Good luck to each and every one of you, and God bless you. Thank you. The, the board president and the senator both have to go to another commencement of our, one of our sister institutions, and that is why we're trying to rush this a little bit forward. But let me take advantage of the fact that I'm at the podium to tell you something that a lot of you have heard. Senator Schumer, I have plagiarized, I confess. When I was at the John Liu inaugural celebration, I heard this gentleman talk about the fact that New York City is the place where immigrants become citizens. I have taken that phrase, Senator, and I have used it many times, the saying that Queensboro Community College is the place where immigrants become educated citizens. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce to you a real luminary in our government, Senator Chuck Schumer. Thank you. And now to President Marti and the distinguished men and women on the platform, to the faculty and staff who make this great institution work so well, to the families of the graduates, but really most of all to you, 
the class of 2005 Queensboro Community College. Congratulations, you've made it. Now, first I'd like to announce my class gift. You know, if you're poor, we help you pay for tuition, and that's a good thing in America. But also, the middle class struggles to go to school, too. And it's not easy. So I passed a law a few years ago that said $4,000 of tuition, your full tuition, is completely deductible on your taxes, provided you or your family's income is below $250,000. So, so, if you're below 250 and you put yourself through school, take it off on your taxes. If your parents have helped put you through school, make sure they take it off on, on their taxes. And if you're above 250,000, God bless you. <laughs> now, to the graduates. You've all worked very hard, and today is a great day for you. And you are graduating at a very important time. It's a time where education and young people are prized like never before. It's a new world, and it's your world, not mine, not those of your parents. And you're entering that world with an education that puts you at the top of the heap. So my advice to you is simple. This is the time. Aspire to that dream. Reach deep down inside yourself and see what you're made of. My advice to the class of 2005 is simple. Go for it. Now sometimes, sometimes you'll make the wrong choice. But as the mayor said, if my experience is any indication, you'll pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and move forward. But if you make the right choice, with a lot of hard work, a little luck, and some prayer, your life will be enriched forever. Now, I learned these things myself. 34 years ago, I was seated like you were graduating from college. I learned as I graduated that I had won a scholarship to travel all around the world, all expenses paid for a whole year. For me, it was the opportunity of a lifetime. I had never been out of the United States before. But at the same time, I met a girl, and I fell in love. I had to decide, do I take the scholarship, or do I stay home with the girl? Well, I chose the girl. Hey, don't applaud yet, the story continues. She went on a short vacation that summer, and I went to the airport to meet her on her return. As soon as she got off the plane, I saw by the look on her face something was wrong. She dumped me by Labor Day. <laughs> there I was. No scholarship. No trip around the world. No girl. I was totally down in the dumps. Stayed in my house for months. Didn't know what I'd do with myself. But I picked myself up, dusted myself off, and moved forward. And a few years later, I found myself again at graduation, this time from law school. Like many of you, my parents were seated in the audience, proud as could be behind me. But on the way home from graduation, I told my parents I wasn't going to join a big law practice like we had planned. I told them I was going to run for public office. My parents were shocked. My mother was particularly disappointed. You see, I grew up in a family that struggled to send their kids to school. And they wanted me to become a big shot lawyer and make a whole lot of money. But my heart wasn't in it. I wanted to do something that would challenge me and excite me every day. And so, at the age of 23, I ran for the New York State Assembly. And that summer, I had three opponents. There was the machine party candidate. There was a neighborhood activist. And then... It was my mother who was telling her friends not to vote for me so I'd get this dumb idea of being a politician out of my thick head. Well, a few years earlier, I didn't get that girl. That November, I won the election. So, graduate. My advice is simple. Go for it. And when
when you have doubts, and we all have doubts, maybe you'll remember a few lines from this poem by Rudyard Kipling called If. He wrote it to his son 130 years ago. It's relevant to you today. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostors just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken, and stoop and pick them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on a turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never read the word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, but not lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all count with you, but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. He wrote it to his son 130 years ago. It's relevant to every one of you today. To the great class of 2005 at Greensboro, congratulations. Good luck. God bless you and go for it. And now, again quickly, because the next person is the chairman of the Fiscal Affairs Committee of the City Council, and there is a budget hearing that he is supposed to be chairing, and he has stayed here in order only just to say hello and greet you, the great David Weber. Thank you, Dr. Mar Dr. Marti, faculty, staff, family and friends, honored guests, and most importantly, Queensboro Community College graduation class of 2005. <laughs> Only a couple of weeks ago, I was here at a citizenship and naturalization ceremony. I must tell you, standing in that room with friends and families of immigrants from around the world, all excited at the reality of becoming American citizens was quite moving and emotional. And I believe what added to that feeling was where the event was taking place, right here at Queensboro Community College. The diversity in that room on that day was only representative of the beautiful mosaic of diverse students who walk this campus each and every day and who sit before us today. Mayor Bloomberg, uh, Borough President Marshall, referred to the wonderful diversity of this uh, graduation class. The reason, when my grandparents uh, came to this country, they came by boat uh, to Ellis Island. Today, everyone uh, flies into Kennedy Airport. And the reason Queens County is so diverse is that most of them, when they get to Kennedy Airport and they get on the Van Wyck Expressway, they never leave Queens County. <laughs> Although I think that may be changing with the um, air train and uh, some of the other uh, traffic uh, problems, but you know, traffic is still a problem. Uh, one of the things that I've been very excited about, um, as Dr. Marti referred to as uh, head of the finance committee and the local councilman, was to obtain uh, a lot of capital funds for Queensboro. And one of the things I'm most proud of was the uh, city's contribution to the uh, Holocaust Center here at uh, Queensboro. It's actually the, um, the only Holocaust Center at any public university in, in the state of New York. And with um, $1.5 million uh, this past year, along with uh, money from the state that um, Senator Padavan uh, and Assemblyman Weprin were helpful in, in bringing, uh, we were able to bring the Holocaust Center out of the basement uh, and into the mainstream. And uh, I think that's something that people of all uh, religions and ethnic backgrounds uh, and the tremendous diversity here at Queensboro will all benefit from. 
I stand here and congratulate all of you for successfully completing your undergraduate work and attaining your associate's degree. I congratulate your teachers and your families for helping to guide you in achieving this noteworthy goal. You should also be as proud of yourselves as your family, friends, faculty, and I are with you today. I'm going to leave you with a very simple equation. Attitude times aptitude equals altitude. What does that mean? Simply defined. Your determination in life multiplied by your level and success of your education will determine how high the goals you, you will attain can be. Good luck to all of you and God bless. There are more greetings. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you my boss, or one of my bosses, uh, a member of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York, a dear friend of Queensborough Community College, and a member of the Holocaust Center Resource, Holocaust Resource Center and Archives Advisory Board, Mr. Jeff Weisenfeld. I have to tell you, having been on both sides of the aisle, because my background is the opposite of Mayor Bloomberg. I was in government first for 21 years, and then I went out to make a living. And I have to tell you, you know, I've seen a lot of these people. I worked for a lot of them. The public officials that address you today happen to have been much more entertaining and interesting than most. So consider yourselves really, really lucky, because I think the mayor did a great job, and so did Senator Schumer. Uh, to all of you, to... Oh, does Helen have to go too? That's too bad. I like Helen. You know, it's too bad I was going to tell her. She reminds me of Diane Carroll, but you'll have to let her know. To all of you, you know, any commencement that a trustee has the privilege to attend, and most of us ourselves are graduates of one city university school or another, in my case, Queens College. Like most of you, or at least very many of you, I'm the first person in my family to receive a college degree. Uh, I must tell you that was, uh, in, in my family's case, because of the type of persecution that perhaps many of you knew in your families. Uh, my family was, uh, at least most of it, murdered. Some of them survived concentration camps and came here. But as we note that Queensboro is a beautiful, and really, truly excellent site for the swearing in of new immigrants, those people at the time didn't even have the opportunity to come here because not only were they imprisoned and most of them murdered in Europe, in the graveyards of Europe, unfortunately because of American isolationism at the time, they were not admitted to this country and many, as you know, in the case, for instance, of the, of the ship, the St. Louis, were sent back to their deaths. So it's very important that you remember where you come from. It's a very important element of your identity. When we talk about e pluribus unum in this country, from many, one, and it's most exemplified in the most beautiful way in Queens County, as Helen Marshall has noted correctly, we do live with each other very well in this county. But remembering where you come from is a critical element of your identity. To put it another way, it reminds me of the story of the gentleman in the theater now this poor guy was laying in the theater, sprawled across two seats. By the way, it was the Yiddish theater. It was the Yiddish theater. And he sprawled across two seats and a woman comes down the aisle with a ticket to one of the seats and she says, Sir, I have a ticket, will you kindly move? And he very lamely responds, Oh, doesn't move. She asks him again, I have a ticket for one of those seats, will you kindly move? And again, he responds, Aye. So she says, look, if you're not going to move, I'm going to have to bring the usher, and we'll have you moved, which she did. The, the usher comes down the aisle and says, sir, this woman has a ticket to one of those seats. Will you kindly move over? And once again, he responds, Aye. Look, the usher says, if you're not going to move, I'll have to get a police officer, and he will, he will make you move, or he'll arrest you. And again, how did he respond? Uh, well, they get Officer Kennedy, ask me why it's Officer Kennedy, 
And Officer Kennedy comes down the aisle and says, Sir, you have a problem? This woman has a ticket to one of these seats. Will you kindly move? And once again, he responded, Aye. So the officer says, My good man, if you're not going to move, I'm going to place you under arrest. To which he again responded, Aye. So he said, Sir, please stand up. You're under arrest. What's your name? Max. Where do you come from, Max? From the balcony. So you see, it's very important where you come from. It's a very important thing to know. So, let me just say this. Sometimes you have to also look reality in the face. The mayor, and I regret that he's gone, has been very kind to this university and to this college in particular. And we have to be intellectually honest about it. Yes, it's a silly season, but sometimes we have to look at people who understand the value of public investment in public education. This college is moving forward on two fronts, one because of the investment being made, and equally important, the participation, the student body at this great school, and finally, a president who is a true star, to which we're all grateful to have as our president, Dr. Marti. Thank you very much and congratulations. And now, bringing greetings from the Chancellor and the Chancellery, the Honorable Ernesto Malave, Vice Chancellor for Fiscal Affairs, Ernesto. Thank you very much, President Marti, distinguished guests, faculty and staff of Queensborough Community College, proud family members, distinguished graduates. It is my privilege today to bring greetings on behalf of Chancellor Matthew Belsing of the City University of New York. This is a very special moment for all of us. For you, it is an absolutely glorious moment. This is a moment you will never forget and you will always cherish. You are here today to reap the reward. The reward for all the work and struggle of the past several years. I say struggle because we at the City University are well aware of what you have come, what you have overcome to be here today. Because we know your struggle, we know just how special this moment really is. What does this moment really mean for you? What now? For some of you, the degree you have earned today will open the door to immediate job opportunities. Some of you will go on to continue your education as far as your ambition will take you. Today marks an important moment when you begin to see how life begins to get better. It gets better when you see the improvements in your life and that of your loved ones. A better life made possible by your work at Queensborough. It gets better when your young children talk to you about the college experience they look forward to because for them, the next generation, it will be merely doing what mom and pop have done and because they will understand at a very young age the importance of lifelong learning. It is then that you will come to know just how important today really is. And how do I know? Because when, one, when my young son spoke to me about college, I felt a tremendous sense of accomplishment and I had a huge smile on my face. I knew then just how good it gets. I mostly thought about and remember that it was 25 years ago at a CUNY community college um, that I attended that I didn't know that 25 years later I would become the university's vice chancellor for budget. A success that ultimately we made possible because of places like Queensborough Community College and by the way that other school was Borough Manhattan Community College. Anyway, I knew then when my son spoke to me about college that what I did in becoming an educated person was to secure a brighter future, not just for my children, but for all of the future generations of my family. That's how important your accomplishment is today. And you should be very, very proud of that. It is in that spirit that I offer you, Queensborough Community College Class of 2005, my heartiest congratulations. On behalf of the Chancellor of the University, I wish you years filled with exhilaration of renewal, the satisfaction of challenges met, and a hope for a very bright future. Thank you for the privilege of joining me today.
Later on, you're going to hear me say something like, by the power vested in me, by the state of New York, and so on. But before I say that, I say, upon the recommendation of the faculty, to represent the faculty of the college, let me, gives me a great deal of pleasure and an honor for me to present Dr. Sheena Gillespie, the chairman of the faculty of Central Academy. Today I'm here on behalf of the faculty to honor the graduates. I'd like to share a proverb with you. To learn is to teach. To teach is to learn. And I would like to thank each of you, the graduates, for what you have taught us. I hope that you are leaving Queensborough with a greater sense of your possibilities, that you will continue to create your own stories for each of you is unique. You've heard a lot today about choices, and I would like to focus on three choices that I would urge you to consider carefully. The first is that you will choose a vocation for which you have a passion. The second is that you will try to spend your life with someone who is a friend of your mind. And above all, that you will cherish your children. Our sincere congratulations to you, your family, and your friends. And representing the students, President Bonnie Duen. And before I bring her here, I have to tell you that this lady, in my mind, represents quiet strength. I have never been in contact with an individual who is polite but firm. And she doesn't move. When she wants something, she goes after it and she stays with it. It is a great pleasure to present to you your leader, President Bonnie Duen. Thank you, President Marti. That was a great introduction. Um, good morning, faculty, staff, and honored guests. Before I begin, I would like to take a moment to applaud the family and friends who have supported us throughout our year at Queensboro. Also, I would like to give several acknowledgments. First, to the excellent faculty being dedicated in producing successful students. The faculty here not only provide an education, they are also a motivator, an advisor, and a friend. Secondly, the administration and staff at Queensboro for their continuously effort in supporting and enhancing a unique educational and friendly environment. Thirdly, all the city all the New York City and New York State supporters in having CUNY providing first-class education at an affordable price for everyone. And finally, the Student Activity Department, Student Government, and all the student groups and athletic teams for providing and adding to this unforgettable campus life at, at Queensboro. Let's give another round of applause. Obviously, I would like to especially welcome Queensboro graduating class of 2005. It is truly an honor as your student government president to address you today. Reflecting on our time here at Queensboro, there were a lot of accomplishment, challenges, and sacrifices. Now we sit here prepared to reap the benefits of these sacrifices. Remembering the tireless night of cramming, the long hours, days, and weeks working on our projects, assignments, and reports. Well, you know what? We made it. We, were, we earned our cap and gown, and no one can take it away from us. There are, many, there are many stories of why we are at Queensboro and how Queensboro provided an environment that nourished our growth. Queensboro has given us an opportunity. No goal is too high. The sky is the limit. From 
the first day at Queensboro, think of all the people you've met, the friends you've made, and the experiences that will carry on forever. Queensboro is a reflection of the world, representing six continents and speaking over 50 different languages. We're every color and every creed. Queensboro serves as a testament to our American society that people of different racial, ethnic, and religious background cannot just simply coexist but truly celebrate life together. Queensboro is our path to our American dream. Now we have to apply, apply our education to our future. With this education, we need to apply it to our career, our next school, and also in life. Empower yourself and others to do the same. Be active in your community and what is going around you and more. Ask questions, learn, explore, and always strive to improve. Stand for your values and what you believe in. Fight against injustice and appreciate kindness. Respect each other and be open-minded. Strive to be a global citizen. Believe you can make a difference and it will make a difference. Let's not forget the past, learn from the past, and apply these lessons in the present and built for the future. I quote a paragraph from Jim Brown, leading an inspired life. It is the face of adversity that change begins. The world doesn't care whether you choose to stop here or go on, so you have to care. It is your own enlightened self-interest. Give adventure a chance. Keep your eyes firmly set on achievement. Don't settle for mere existence and self-pity. Make a commitment to excellence. And remember, it is your own personal challenge to use all your gifts, skills, talents, and knowledge to survive and succeed. Congratulations, class of 2005, and it has been my privilege to serve you. Thank you, and best wishes to all. As you can see, a lot of individuals have given you the gift of their words and their thoughts. I want you to note, and, and a lot of them had serious and important commitments, but I want you to note that there's one person who's given you the gift of his presence, and that is Senator Parker. Well, have you had enough greetings? Yeah. <laughs> With us on the platform are a number of many distinguished guests that I will ask for them to stand and be recognized. These are individuals who have come to share the celebration with you. But of course, if we had them all speak, this would be a very Already, it's a long ceremony, it will be an even longer ceremony. Let me start out with a dear friend and a, an associate and a person who's been at my side all throughout, Chief Operating Officer Howard Lapid. <laughs> Vice President Diane Cole. <laughs> Vice President Ellen Hardy. Vice President Mark McCullough. <laughs> Dean Karen Steele. <laughs> Dean Paul Jampier. <laughs> Dean Kathy Allen. <laughs> Representing the Academic Senate, Professor Kathy Milan. Retired Vice President Patricia Arnowski. <laughs> and representing our board of directors of our foundation, the chair of the board, Ms. Carol Consulat. <laughs> Ms. Harry Kupferberg. <laughs> the recipient of the first presidential medal given at Queen's Forum last year. Mr. Stephen Levine <laughs> and Mrs. Cheryl Levine. 
and the Dean Bill Faulkner. And of course, the person who is always with us, Sister Alice. I always call her Sister Alice. Her name is Sister Alice Danaher. Uh, it is now my pleasure to present the College Awards. Will the recipients of the College Awards come forward as I call your name? Leone Pili, Eric Segura, Adolfo Chioc, Jim Gang, Gila Abedin, Adina Hodges, and Gilchrist Berkeley. This is the cream of the crop. The uh, John F. Kennedy Award goes to Adina Hodges. to give the right one because there's a little check there. <laughs> the Martin Luther King Award goes to Gilchrist Burton. Thomas Jennings Award, Memorial Award goes to the gra an outstanding graduate student in the liberal arts and science, Adolfo Chio. The George Alterman Award to the graduating student achieving the highest scholastic average in associates in science, math and science goes to Mr. Jing Yang. The Colonel John Lacas Award to the graduating students achieving the highest scholastic average in an associate in applied science degree program to Gila Abedin. Yay! The Joseph McMurray Award to the graduating student achieving the second highest scholastic average in the class of 2005, Iris Segura. Last but not least, the President's Award, sponsored by the Queensborough Community College Fund, is given to the graduate student achieving the highest scholastic average in the class of 2005. We have co-winners this year, two individuals with the same average, 4.0, same number of credits, same number of transfer credits. They're both here, they both received it. Uh, one could not be here today, and uh, the other person is here, so the award goes to Leone Pili, who's here. <laughs> and unfortunately, Adi Sharir cannot be with us today. Thank you very much. Will the graduating students please rise while the Grand Marshal administers the Aphidic Oath.
and in the tradition of the ancient Athenians, take this oath of devotion to our city. We dedicate ourselves to the ideals and sacred values of our free society. We will never bring disgrace upon our community by any act of dishonesty or cowardice, nor fail to respect our fellow citizens. We will revere and obey the laws under which we live. We will do our utmost to quicken understanding, respect, and reverence for them. And we will strive unceasingly to strengthen the public sense of civic duty. Thus, in all ways, we will seek to transmit this city better and more beautiful than it was transmitted to us. Please be seated. We shall now proceed with the conferring of degrees and certificates. The candidates will be presented by the Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Mark McCullough. Will the audience please refrain from applauding until degrees for each group have been conferred and certificates granted. Will candidates for the degree of Associate in Arts please rise. These candidates have met all the requirements for their degrees. I am pleased to present them to you, and I respectfully request that you confer upon them the degree of Associate in Arts. Upon the recommendation of the Vice President and the faculty of the college, and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Associates in Art with all the rights, privileges, immunities, and honors thereunto appertaining. Congratulations. Why you, will you please approach so you receive your degrees? While they're doing that, let me announce to you that those individuals who are wearing a yellow stole like this one are members of the Phi Theta Kappa National and International Honor Society. And the reason that I say that is that the secret handshake of the society is a hug. So it is not that we're just hugging everybody. This is the way we recognize one another. Josephine Patty. Tara Schnorr. Juan Rincon. Lynn Pettit. Sophia Pankasova. Vanessa Kinones, <laughs> Yahira Vega, Alicio Dumaritu, Judine Mufli, Audrey Trail. Adolfo Chia, Linda Miller, Patrick Murphy, Jennifer Olds, Asimina Panagiotopoulos. Prabjo Rajrishi, Nadia Torres, Matthew Rosen, 
Pascal Mills. <laughs> Melissa Mahar Mahar Mahaverson. Michelle Martinez. Vinay Perry. Sharomini Nareen. Jacqueline Nunez. Stephen Ming. Leone Peel. Dario Peters. Selena Moreau. Glenn Roback. Anne Melicon. David Mays. Arcana Raj. Irene Deshawn. Christine Rogers. Henry Phoebe, Gail Martinez, Brenda Ward, Lillian Salinas, Stephanie Salik, Jomar Montalone. Melissa Bridge-Mohan. Chidi Aborja. Miriam Higua. Christopher Wims. Eric Smothers. Gabriel Paulino. Fatima Williams. Peña Francisca. Antonio Sarika. Barney Wise. Zhuan Sang Zhu. Hamboy Trong. Victor Vorobia. Ink Young Pack. Karen Tolentino. Cynthia Roman. Yeah. Laurie O'Brien. Alejandra Portillo. It's been my pleasure and uh, my pride to present the candidates today. Thank you. Okay. As you probably figured out, it's not alphabetical, so continue paying attention. <laughs> Eliza Audubon. Makia J. Henry. <laughs> Theodore Bonacos. Paulette Livingston. Elena Acosta. Alicia Lasco. Lois Brotherson. 
Karina Brites. Omar Argueta. Ina Itzvakova. Elizabeth Diaz. Christina Casella. Maria Lopez. Kanwalpreet Kaur. Candida Baez. Monica Lopez. Shanique Johnson. Sophia Cavallaris. Janice Brown. Joseph Cusimano. Tara Lowenstein. Shavon Jackson. Iola John. David Harris. Jennifer Crespo. Ubaldo Colon. Shadai Dudley. Madeline Gomez Schwartz. Vanessa Church. Heather Fitzpatrick. David D. Corbett, Jr. Rosemary Cavallari. Christina Ionello. Fareko Asherova. Ilana Davinsky. Christopher Cole. Leslie Chicoma. Lena Kaye. Lizette Gonzalez. Bowman Che. Rosanna Jimenez. Caroline Kelly. Kathy Ferguson. Arlene Estrella. Wendy Diaz. Paola Funes. Christina Del Rosario. Carmelita Cyrus. Michael Huber. Adrian Chan. Jane Johnson. Jasmine Gerald. Wayne Johnson. Lamya Adam. Chi Chen. Juan Izara. Pedro Chilala. Susan K. Rusley Dufort. Danielle Lanzetta. Jeff Block. Yeah, no. 
Liliana Aristizabo. Yeah, I mean, I got a great shot. Judy Becerra. Time is it? Dale Gambarini. Oscar Piero. Robina Anwar. Shahana Akhtar. Amina Begum. Douglas Galeas. Pedro Green Star Diaz. Vidal Edmead. Paulo Alves. Nana Pori. Lawrence Duble Jr. Jacqueline Corrigan. Choi, John Giraldo, Irving Armand, Diana Carcamo, Karen Green, Lord Cruz, BJ Gadassi. Mary Chen, Rose Brissett, Colleen Guthrie, Blanche Farfan, Bill Roy Fraser. Evelyn Feliciano. Angela Grant. Joanne Earhart. Janice Eubank. Jacqueline Barnico. Ralph Catella. Michael Pong, Luis Sequentes, Michelle Dacus, Eileen Fee, Alexander Devold Fox,
Johnson, Judy Jones, Virginia Layden, 
Laurel Hillier. Victoria Hopper. Ronaldo Kingland. Susanna Lemma. Rhoda Lakin. Nidalia Irizari. Michael Contestavi. Christine Kilkenny. Teresita Isma. Beverly Bailey. Cheryl Harrison. Hyacinth Barrett. Nilofor Lakhani. Joyce Moncrief. Harry Chan Mohan. Tian Shi Lo. Navy Jacko. Noemi Munoz. Marisol Lopez. Andre Kim. Frankie LaBianca. Mohammed Karim. Andrew Murrell. Damian Hutchinson. Abdurrahim Lajbah. Colleen Monet. Joshua Nwanza. Diana Mohammed. Mark Kenson, Jane Baptiste. Harry Sugira. Stephen Martinez. John. Santa Maria Fuentes Daniel Love Tanya Giadi Gary Lee Umar Pakor. Joseph John. Ariane Aya. Sephora Khan. Susan Alusa. Yono Wella Marway. Stephanie Jack. Michael Cormusis. Ira Nobler. John Marin. Yolto Mushineva. Carlton Johnson. Vladimir Judy. 
Alexander Kuchkaro. Lucianes Laura. Jacqueline Miranda. Nicholas Kuzonis. Marvella Hopper. Matthew John. Perfan Mandani. Teresha Morrison. Valeria Moreno. Shanta McCallum. Maria James. Inois Bastion. Farrah Sherry. Paul Henry Pericles. Yuridine Speed. Sharon Malcolm Miller. Paulina Jatsak. Yang Xian Mei. Benedict Payson. Declan Julian. Marshall Barrancos. Glenny Rodriguez. Elizabeth Palacios. Elisora Rosato. Luis Rodriguez. Yalsari Nunez. Shanor Sultana. Romina Ahmed. Sultana Shakur. Ivan Suarez. Sharon Shippey. Martha Reggio. Candice Petra Costa. Shandarut Rakan. Kevin Persaud. Kathleen Salmon. Natalie Nichols. Thomas O'Sullivan. Gina, I'm sorry, Judy So. Amy Saiz. Arlene Palomino Ramirez. Cami Cisco. Gladys Steinberg. Celia Novelli. Dubane Quintana. Jay Simmons. Nadine Sorrell. Kunwate Ramani. Dwight Satchel. Gail Plummer. Dioki Sivatan. 
Michelle 
Certificates are assembled. These candidates have met all the requirements for their certificate. I'm happy to present them to you, and I respectfully request that you grant them their certificates. Thank you very much. Upon the recommendation of the Vice President and the faculty of the college, and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, of the City University of New York, I hereby grant your certificates. Please approve. Amina Aboki. Ramon Acosta. Ramon A. Alvarez. Lalaina Andriana Jasmine. Constance Marie Barnes. Jian Yang. Adina Hodes. Samantha Basteo. Kiprianos Gazenikas. Crystal Bison. Wilton Blake. If they have the block. Andrea Edwards. George Elisi. Rezar Elmazi. 
Katrina Elliot. Rehana Begum. Maritza Estrada. Shanice Brown. Carla T. Bosnia. Marisa Bishop. Shante Butler. Thomas Burns. Melissa Campbell. Olivia Campbell. Charles Chien. Eileen Chong. David Cullum. Christina Dardak. Gilchrist Burton. Hilda Dan Archibald. Darlene Diaz. Cheryl Duar. Paula Dosa. Raquel Duran. Philip Dunn. Aldine Felix. Colu Falope. Raquel Gilmore. Rada Ranum. Shara Henriquez. Santiago Gutierrez. Lucia Henry. Shona Hibbert. Bridget Iare, Hakim Fridi, Imran Haq, Vanessa Hernandez, Yuki, Yukiko Ishiwata, Anu Iti Ipe, Anne Cavillo. Leticia Ham. Ki Ku. Mary Lee. Enza Lafata. Mario Lewis. Dori Landono. G. Tan. Nancy Nieto. Joanne Santoro. Erica Vargas. Michael Tarla. Kevin Moreau. Nirmal Saraz. Sarah Ramjohn. Hanwate Singh. Jessica Volpan. Marlene Marin. Sachi Kroashima. 
Subhashini Subendran. Mordom Praven is now getting an AS and an KAS degree at the same time. Sanzila Charmin. Karapan Siddhika. Lady Moralem Zadar. Gabriela Rodriguez. Giuliano Rossetti. Joseph Sierra. G. Sue. Xiong Yang Kok. Oskama Orvalis. Sharon McGarrell. Karen Rodriguez. Luciana Ron Prasad. Alex Sam. Donovan Tabuka. Jason Williams. Michael McIntosh. Natasha Saint Laurent. Calvin Medica. James Beer Manin. Anka Samaranda. Luz Ortiz. Ian Peterson. Harris Wright. Piesbia Bridges. Leslie Ann Nelson. Chris Sabastano. Martha Bayona. Philip Sue. And last but not least, Heidi Martinez. Please rise. I need you to move your tassels to your left. And you can throw the hats up with you on them. If you want to keep them, you can keep them. Congratulations. The party is about to begin, but before it does, I would like to have the following students join me at the podium. Iris Segura, Jean Yang, Gilchrist Burton, Tolulupe Palope, and James Shu. I don't know how many of you remember this, but at orientation, 
I gave you the first lesson that you would receive at Queensboro. And for those of you who didn't remember, we talked about the art and science of teaching and learning, nurturing the growth of the individual in a supportive environment, and establishing an atmosphere of mutual respect and understanding. That was the first lesson. But now I have the privilege of giving you the last lesson that you will receive at Queensborough. And there are some words that I want you to try to remember. First, remember that the horizon is not a limit, but an invitation. Pursue your dreams with a sense of responsibility that comes from the understanding that every choice you make affects the rest of us. And as you move forward in your accomplishments, and you will be accomplished, please, please, be sensitive to the needs of others, balance the taking with the giving, be fair in your pursuit of happiness. And as the Spanish poet Antonio Machado said in his poem, Caminos de Castilla, Caminantes, no hay caminos. Caminos se hacen al andar. Traveler, there is no road. Roads are made as you walk. And in Japanese, Travelers, there's no road. Roads are made as you walk. Well, let's try Creole. Les voyageurs, la panne chimé, chimé qui fait con ou ca marché. And in Korean. I think it's only appropriate that with the diversity of this campus that we say goodbye with those mirrors. Thank you very much. Now, class of 2005, Please sing the alma mater, or else your degrees are dull and bullet. And Mrs. Susan Egan, Managing Artistic Director of Queensborough's Performing Arts Center, will lead you. Following the alma mater, the audience is requested to remain standing for the, for the recessional, and members of the audience are asked to remain in their places until the recessional has concluded. All graduates, guests, and members of the faculty are invited to the reception following the ceremonies and will be held under the trees to your left.
back and follow me.